Hey everyone, my name is Christy. Welcome to my corner. Thank you all so much for joining me today for Floss Tube Friday on this Friday the 13th. I realized that I just missed having my 13th floss tube on Friday the 13th by one week. And I'm not sure if that would have been like more lucky or less lucky. And if this is good, I don't know. I guess, I guess we'll see. I'm not generally superstitious, so I'm not actually so worried about it. And I usually have pretty decent Friday the 13th, actually. Anyway, we'll see if it makes any difference to my filming or not. Although this is now like the sixth time I've tried to start it. So maybe that is the Friday the 13th curse. I don't know. Welcome to my new subscribers. Thank you all so much for taking the time to subscribe and hang out with me. And welcome back to everyone who hangs out with me every week. It's so nice to chat with you in the comments. And I see you on Instagram. My Instagram is Dr. Underscore Christy. And I'll put that down below. If you want to see the stuff that I'm working on and share your stuff with me, please tag me. And this is a channel about embroidery and other textile crafts like needle felting and baking and history and the history of those things. If those are topics that you are interested in, please hit that subscribe button and stick around. I'd love to have you hang out with me. First of all, I want to say that I did send out my prizes for my 200 subscriber giveaway that I did a couple weeks ago. I sent them out on Monday, so they should be getting to the winners well tomorrow or uh, if they haven't gotten there already, but the post office lady said tomorrow. So those are out. I did do that. I promise. Okay. Stitching. I have some exciting stitching things happening these days. Last week I mentioned that I probably wouldn't have much time to stitch because, um, I had to work a ton and I had a ton of grading to do. Well, that didn't quite go as planned. Those of you who watch my mom's vlog every day, know that my grandfather passed away last weekend and um he was 103 so this was not unexpected and he had been going downhill very quickly and we are sad about it and we will miss him greatly and he lived an amazing and interesting life i think we're all doing really okay um but i did give myself some time at the beginning of the week for some stitch therapy um those of you who um stitch or knit or quilt or do other handcrafts know how healing those can be and I really kind of gave myself time to just um, grieve and um, mourn him but also celebrate him and um, I did a lot of stitching and sewing actually uh, to help me with that to, to heal my heart right it really soothed my heart to do all that stuff so because of that, I have an FFO, a fully finished object. Um, I have whips, I have new starts. I have a haul that is so exciting. It's going to get its own unboxing video on Tuesday, but I'll give you a sneak peek today. And then I will talk about my plans. So let's get started. Um, FFOs, I finished my black work. That's not in black, but my black work flower from the steady thread and I finished it into an adorable bookmark. I love it. I just put felt on the back and this is stitched on 14 count Ada just that I got just a white Ada that I got from Joann's um, and I made little tassels. The, the threads are from dying for cross stitch and then I made little tassels just to make it fun. I Finished it on felt to give it a little heft, although Ada's pretty good with that. And I used some heat and bond and I bonded it together so it's glued together. And then I did a, a blanket stitch, a double blanket stitch actually, around the outside in both of the threads. So I love it. I think I'm going to use this a lot over break. I have a lot of reading to do um, and I'm excited. So that is my fully finished object. I also made a ton of tiny little hat decorations right here and I made a tutorial for them that I posted on Tuesday and I'll put a link to that up here above my sewing machine so if you want to make some tiny little hats you can check that out. They're really quick and easy and adorable and you can use them for so many things and 
I had mentioned a bunch of things in the video, but you can also put them on an ugly sweater if you're going for an ugly sweater contest. Virtual, virtual and socially distanced ugly sweater contest. Um, hats might be really cute on that. So I did that and then I also made a, this isn't gonna show, I also made a dog bed for my pups. He's actually really sad. I, he really loves, he's like loves this dog bed and I moved it out of its spot and apparently he was moping. So he's right there, he's right there moping about me holding up his dog bed. This is just made out of foam that I had lying around. I was going to make a footstool out of it and then I found a cheap footstool and the fabric is just blue upholstery fabric that I've had for a while. I used to, I used to work at Renaissance fairs when I lived in Michigan and Pennsylvania and I would make my own clothing because Renaissance fair clothing was very expensive and I didn't have any money. I was a grad student or right out of college. And so I learned how to make bodices and, um, you know, overdresses and stuff like this. And so this um, fabric was part of an overskirt that I had made years and years ago that I was never going to wear again. So I decided to make it into a dog bed and it worked really well. So those are my finishes, um, my bookmark, my tiny hats and my dog bed. Let's talk about whips. The only whip I have left, of course, well, that's not true, but my main whip that I've been working on is Hildegard of Bingen's Cosmic Egg. If you would like to learn more about Hildegard of Bingen, uh, I made a whole video about this, um, this piece of art. Um, you can find that right here above my sewing machine, but I've been working on, oh, here, I'll put it on this side. I have been working on the stars in the firmament. Um, I finished the winds and the outlines here. And I think that those had not been done when you last saw it. I'll put a picture of the actual image right here so you can see that. But basically I am trucking away at this. I do have to say though that working on these stars on this watercolor paint is very difficult. If I were to do this again, I would be, I would make the watercolor less opaque and I would actually make it more watercolored. I don't know. It, it's just really hard to get through. It hurts my fingers. Uh, it actually, like my hands start cramping up, like trying to pull it through. I have a thimble that pops it through the, like pops the needle point through, but pulling it out is just so much work and my hand all cramps up. So anyway, I'll keep working on it. Lessons learned. It's my first time doing this kind of a mixed media piece. Um, but I really love it. I mean, the middle just looks so good if you look at the middle of this picture here. Anyway, so that's um, well on its way to, you know, getting done. I would like to finish all of the stars. I don't know if you can see. Yeah, you can see. I would like to finish all these stars and then there are little white stars that are scattered throughout. I would like to finish all of those by Thanksgiving, which for those of you not in the U.S. is the fourth. Thursday of the month. So like the 26th, I think it is. That is my one whip. And this is just done on a natural linen that I, a uh, yardage that I got from that quarter shop. And the threads are all over the place. They are DMC, dyeing for cross stitch, color and cotton, weeks dye works, Devere yarns. I have all sorts of threads happening in here. For this project because I went with the color. Um, Doc Stitcher, uh, like in her last video, asked how you choose colors for these kinds of things. And I responded like, you just do it by eye. You just kind of find what works the best. And that's basically what I did. And this is nice because there's not so much shading. So it's mostly independent colors. But anyway, that is my Hildegard of Bingen's Cosmic Egg. I also said last week that I would print out the the lettering for my logo stitch and I did that. So I printed that out. I have not done anything with it. Um, I'll put a picture up here of what that, what that sort of looks like at the moment. And then I will um, start working on this in the next couple of weeks. So that was printed out as well. That's all my whips because I finished my black work. And so I have a couple of new starts. 
My first new start is the Penguin and Fish Embroidery of the Month, which I forgot to mention because we started working on it early and it is adorable and I really love it. Um, I'll put a picture of it right here, but I am stitching it on red felt. I hate stitching on felt so much. I hate this. I hate working with it. I hated transferring the design to it. I hate everything about it. I love the design. It's completely adorable. And I really want to stitch it so that I can use it in my Christmas decorations. I hate stitching on this in every way possible. There are people who stitch on felt all the time and I don't know how they do it without pulling their hair out. Like it is driving me bonkers. So I'm, I don't know. I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. Um, I'll talk about that in plans, but I am loving the design. It's freaking adorable. Hate stitching this right now, but I'm going to have to make that decision tonight because I'm stitching on, I'm, you know, I'm stitching on it again tonight, but I wanted to add that the reason why we're stitching this early, because we usually stitch this, it's a whole stitch along for a week. It's usually the third week of the month, which would be next week. But next week is an auction for the penguin and fish koala quilt back in january when there were all of those fires in australia Alyssa thomas from penguin and fish decided to take all the proceeds from her koala pattern which i'll put a link to down below i'll put a link to the the embroidery of the month down below too but the koala pattern she was going to donate all the proceeds to a, an organization called Australians for Animals, which basically during those fires adopted smaller koala rescue centers that weren't getting all those donations um, and kind of giving them money. And so she donated proceeds to that. And then she decided that she would ask for these embroideries to be sent to her and then she'd make a quilt out of them. Well, I sent an embroidery there and mine's very obvious actually, because mine is like a really dark green. So you can check that out. Um, but that quilt is being auctioned next week to raise more money for Australians for animals. So I will put a link to that below because if anyone is interested in this really adorable quilt that like 90 people contributed to, including yours truly and want to, bid on it, um, you'll have access to that down below. So I just wanted to make a plug for that. It's for a really good cause. You know, there, the 2020 has been so, has been so crazy that it's almost unbelievable to think that those Australian fires were less than a year ago because of all the stuff that's happened since. But with the pandemic happening things are even more dire for those animals and those animal shelter groups because they're not getting the funds that they would have gotten normally. So if you are interested in the quilt, um, I'll put a link to that also down below. You'll see like a penguin and fish like unit uh, of links down below that you can check out. And uh, yeah, anyway, and if nothing else, you can see my blog or spread the word about it to your own subscribers and followers on social media. That would be really awesome. What else? Oh, I started a new landscape. I haven't done a new landscape in months. And those of you who saw my video of the threads exhibit, I'll put a link up here above my sewing machine um, at my local gallery. I had some of my landscapes that I'd done my embroidery landscapes that I'd done um, showing at a local art gallery on my campus. And, uh, you know, that was, well, the, the gallery shows over, but I haven't done an, a landscape in, in months. And I just wasn't feeling creative. I was feeling really stressed out. You know, the semester was being really difficult. I was really concerned about the election um, and you know, the election's over and I'm very relieved with the outcome, whatever you are political, I'm not going to dog anybody, but just know that I am very relieved personally by the election results. And last night I was feeling like I really wanted to start a new landscape. So I did. And I decided to do, I mean, it doesn't look like much now, 
but I decided to do a, it's going to be a winter scene. I think someone asked if I could do a tutorial on how I do landscapes. And the answer is that I don't know that I can, because this is all the sketch that I'm going to have. And then I'm just going to throw thread at my, <laughs> throw thread at it and hope for the best. But it's an evening winter scene. Um, this is the moon. This here will be, will be a lake. I have some trees here in the foreground. This will be snow. And I think I'm going to needle felt clouds, which is one of the reasons why I started needle felting in the first place was to try needle felting clouds. So I'm really excited about that. But the fact that I'm really excited about needle felting clouds tells you something about like my, my stage of isolation at the moment, right? We're like, what is this? Eight months in to isolation. Uh, and I'm an extrovert, and so needle felting clouds is now my excitement. But the other exciting thing, which says something similar, is that I, if you've been watching my videos, you know that I hauled, I purchased different brands of needles to try them out because DMC tears up my floss. It tears up my embroidery floss. So I tried different kinds of needles. I bought some John James needles, some Bowen needles, and some tulip needles. And I am trying out Bowen and tulip needles on this. And so far I love them both, but like tulip needles, the thread goes through tulip needles like butter. They're more expensive and I totally understand, but the, the floss goes through like butter. It uh, threading that needle yesterday was a joy. So I'm playing around with different needles for this project, but I am so excited about it. And I don't know if you can tell, you can kind of tell this fabric has like a sparkle, like a greenish tinted spark. Oh, that was it. There we go. See, I love it. It's from Fat Quarter Shop. It's a linen. I don't remember what it's called, but I'll put the link to it below. I have this in white, the same sparkle in white and also in black, but I thought the gray would be nice for this. So I'm excited about this and this will take a couple weeks, but I feel really, feel really good about this. And I'm not going to stitch the, the sky. I'm going to leave that kind of sparkly and nice. Oh, and about the needles, I do want to do an actual like test of the needles and see which DMC tulip, John James and Bow, and I have all those needles in the same sizes, and I really want to do a like comparison of those needles. And this is embroidery needles. I don't know anything about cross stitch needles. This is for embroidery purposes only, but I really want to do an actual comparison. And so I'll record that video probably in the next couple weeks because I'm kind of fascinated by these needles and by the differences between these needles and what a difference a good needle can have on my enjoyment of stitching. Keep an eye out for that in the next couple weeks as well. Okay, let's talk about haul. I'm so excited. I got in the mail, it's heavy, the Earth Hues Natural Dyeing Kit from Woolery.com. I'm so excited about this. I will, like I said, I will do an entire unboxing of this and talk about all the different colors that are in it, what they're made of. Um, I'll talk about how I'm going to use it and why I'm using it the way I'm using it, which is all about history. And that'll be for my Tuesday video. I did already open it, check the contents to make sure everything was in there that needed to be in there. But I am so excited about this box. I thought this was going to come next week and I got it like three days ago. So I'm really excited about this Tuesday. Watch for Tuesday. I also got a skein of merino wool lace weight yarn from Knit Picks. Um, and this is their bare shadow lace weight yarn. And I got this because I want to play around with uh, dyeing wool, but wool embroidery floss is actually really, it was really quite expensive. And so I would rather play around with this than play around with um, wool, like bare wool embroidery floss. But this is actually thin enough, I think, that it could work for more chunky embroidery. So I think if I, when I dye this, it won't be wasted, which is good. I'm also going to play around dyeing cotton on my cotton 
white DMC Cone of Doom, which will also be really fun to see how they take these natural dyes differently. That'll be, that's kind of a, a big plan of mine for the next couple months during my break, my winter break, because I do really want to start doing more historically accurate medieval embroideries. Um, I'm a medieval historian. I really enjoy medieval embroideries. And so I want to be more accurate in doing them. In particular, my reproductions of the Bayou Tapestry, which um, King Harold is right here. And I'll show him again on Tuesday and talk about exactly what I want to do with it. But I have plans and I'm really excited about those plans. Oh, and I'll be filming all that dyeing stuff. So you can look forward to seeing my my wins and losses in the whole natural dyeing department. I've never done it before. I have to get some more equipment, like I have to get pots and stuff that are specific to the dyeing and are dedicated to dyeing and not food. But luckily, because I'm dyeing floss and yarn, little bits of yarn at a time, instead of fabric, I can have smaller pots and they'll be cheaper. It'll take less time. And the stuff in this will last a really long time, which is nice. Oh, I also got just another tiny little haul is I got little plastic ornaments, clear empty ornaments, because I've decided to put my orts in them. This is probably actually like two thirds of my orts. And if you don't know what an ort is, I learned from Pam of Stitching in the Land of Good Enough that orts are the little pieces of floss that you cut off of your, uh, at the end of your, whatever, your stitching, right? And the question is, what do you do with them? Well, I keep them in a jar. And I decided that I would make an ornament every year or two ornaments every year with the year on it and all my orts for the year so I can remember my project. And it was funny as I was filling this, I'm like, oh, that's from my hot air balloon pin. And oh, that's when I was playing around with, you know, such and such. So that was actually really fun to fill this up before filming. I have one more. I think I'll have enough. I actually have probably not enough to fill the next one. So I need to get stitch in, that's for sure. But that's my other haul. And I'll put Pam's channel down below. She's completely delightful, but I need more orts. Okay, so let's talk about plans. I'm going to work on the Cosmic Egg this week. I want to get a little bit more of those stars done. And I want to work on the landscape this week. The landscape is still kind of forming in my head. So we'll see how that turns out. I never know how they're going to turn out. I'm always afraid they're going to turn out terrible because I do very little planning, but it's okay. I do want to finish the letter, the Christmas letter, the Penguin and Fish Embroider of the Month. And I think I might not do it on the felt. I think I might scrap the felt and do it on. I have a red cotton fabric that will be much more pleasant to stitch on. It's just a cone of cotton in red. It'll be way more pleasant. And I do think that I want to use this in my Christmas decorations and actually hang it up, which would be kind of nice. So I think, I think I might restart it this evening. So you'll see that next week. If either way, you'll see next week. I do also want to transfer the logo text onto the fabric. By next week. I don't think I'll start it again. I, at the end of the semester, I have lots of grading to do, but I do want to at least transfer, transfer the text on or the image on there. So I may do that. And I might do some needle felting on my deer, my, from the Woolery.com, my Scandinavian deer, which would also be a really nice Christmas decoration. And then I might start another black work piece because stitching that flower was just, once I got into the rhythm of it, was just so soothing. So I might do that as well. We'll see. I always have lots of plans and then I sometimes do them and I sometimes don't do them and we shall see. But I think that's it from me for today. So thank you all so much for joining me. If you enjoyed hanging out with me and you're not subscribed, please subscribe and stick around. I'd love to have you join me. Um, like I said, I will be doing the unboxing of the natural dyes on Tuesday. So you please check that out. And with all that being said, please take good care of yourselves and have a good one.